Hello, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to episode 6 of my Logic Pro 10 video tutorial series. In this video, we'll be taking a look at cycle recording, also known as loop recording. Cycle recorder is a really cool recording function because it allows us to record multiple takes in a sequence without having to stop and start the playback over and over again. So what we're going to do is set a cycle range, essentially a loop range, and then hit record, and then the playhead will continuously loop the section between the locators, the cycle mode locators, and then it'll continue to record while it's looping. So this is great for things like guitar solos, where you need to play the same solo or a variation of the solo uh, multiple times in a sequence before you get the perfect take of it. So in previous videos, I showed you that the cycle mode is located up here in the control bar, and you can just basically click on this icon and that turns on or off your cycle range. You can also click on the cycle range to turn it on. You can grab it and move it around as well. And then the other way you can turn it on is to hit C on your keyboard that toggles it on and off. So what I've done in advance is I have uh, recorded this kind of funk jam. And what I'm going to do is set the right locator to the tail end of the uh, regions here. Then I'm going to set the left locator to right before the drum fill at the beginning. And let's listen to what this sounds like. So as you can see, the playhead looped around to the beginning of the recording after it got to the end of the cycle range. So what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to record a guitar solo, or actually a series of guitar solos, on top of this funk jam. Um, so what I'm going to do first is duplicate my guitar crunch track uh, so I can have another track with similar settings. And uh, to do that, there is an icon right here above... Uh, the tracks here. I just realized I spelled guitar wrong. But what this does is it creates a new track with duplicate settings. So you click on that. It duplicates the track. I can pull it up to the top. I'll rename it uh, what lead guitar. And I'm just going to tweak a few things on it. Um, what I'm going to do is go into the amp designer here. So you just click on the middle of the uh, the plugin. Uh, and what it'll do is it will open up the amp, amp designer plugin. So just click in the middle part of the of the plugin. And then I'm going to pull my bass up a little bit, I'll pull my mids up a little bit, pull the treble down, pull the presence up quite a bit. I just want to make sure that my lead tone is a little bit different sounding than my rhythm tone. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is pull the volume up a little bit on the lead guitar. And I'm also going to go into my uh, limiter here and just uh, pull the threshold down. Now typically you wouldn't put a mastering limiter on a track like this, but well, I did for this example. All right, so I'm about ready to record. Uh, all I'm going to do is arm the track and then uh, just make sure that the uh, input on the track is the same as the input that you're plugged into. So it is. So I've got my guitar plugged into input one and the track is receiving input one. And all I have to do is just hit R to record. So let's give this a shot.
right, so that sounded good. Um, what we've got is uh, four takes inside of a take folder. So for each solo that I played, uh, Logic automatically created a new take inside of a take folder for us. And uh, so what we're going to do is double click on the top of the take folder. It collapses them all together. Double click again to open it back up. And just like in the previous two videos, uh, we can select a take just by clicking on it. And then we can drag over it to use quick swipe comping to use or not use uh, a section of a take. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use most of take four and then just a little bit of take three. So I'm just going to drag this. Oh, actually, I got to drag this to the left because what's in blue is being heard and what's gray is not being heard. And then I'll just swipe over the part of take three that I want to keep. There we go. Just uh, fine tune our edit point here and then double click on the top to collapse it all and let's see what this sounds like. All right, that sounded pretty good. And keep in mind that you don't have to just use two takes. Uh, if you want to, using quick swipe comping, you can even use all four takes, little pieces of all four takes if you want to. So this is the great thing about cycle record, especially for solos and things like that, because part of the, part of the solo is just the improvisational nature of it. And you never know what you're going to get sometimes. You may end up with something that's a great take, something that's not so great take. So this lets you kind of put uh, put together the best pieces of each take and then have a, a perfect take uh, in the end without having to stop and start playback over and over again. So I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks again for watching.